Hey, good morning all. Gary here. I'm working on a little urban scene today. It is a 6x9 sheet of Arsh 140 pound cold press paper. I'm just uh, doing a simple little composition of a crooked building and I'm just balancing it out with uh, tree on the left. Sorry, <laughs> tree on the right. I'm sorry, I was looking at the telephone pole. And I will eventually have some buildings in the background to fill that little space at the bottom right. So my inking, I'm using a Lamy Fine Nib with waterproof ink. So for the sky, I didn't want it to dominate this, so I'm taking my hockey brush and putting in some, well, somewhat clean water. And then I mixed up a batch of ultramarine with some Payne's Gray and some Burnt Sienna to do the blue-gray portion. And some raw sienna for the uh, goldy color in there. So that's what it looked like when it dried. Uh, foreground, just Payne's Gray, a bit of dry brush technique there for the, uh, for the underside. I'm going to go back to that because it's... Uh, Sidewalk's pretty close to the road color and I'll have to do something with that. Put a little patch of green space in there in this corner lot. Put the green in underneath the uh, rocks which are actually supporting that uh, big long 2x4 which is supporting the house. This one, I put a character in this one. Little guy sitting in the window watching out over the street see what's happening. Oh, by the way, uh, if this appears to be going very quickly well, it is. Um, I guess on YouTube, you can. there's a button you can push there to slow this whole thing down. So hopefully that helps. So my garbage cans were a Payne's Gray and a Burnt Sienna. Now here's the background that I was talking about, which is a, um, a group of uh, buildings in the background. Far enough back that there's no detail. And I used some uh, really washed out ultramarine with a bit of cobalt in that. And I'm just really dampening the bottom portion of them there to uh, show that they are quite a ways back in a different distance and creating a bit of atmosphere. Now, as far as the composition goes, I was thinking of putting something in that space and I just didn't. So we're going to leave it as is. Hey, please like and subscribe. Thanks so much to everybody who's jumped on with this uh, and joined my or subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, crazy the response I've had. And thanks so much for the comments. I read them all and I'm taking notes and I want to try and put some stuff together here that uh, you guys can digest and enjoy and maybe uh, use it as part of your work. I will mention I'm not a teacher. I'm just a guy painting and uh, just share my process online. So here we are going over to the posts. That's a combination of greens and browns. I use a very limited palette. Uh, there's the raw sienna to show some wear on the sign. So, um, you know, I, I a lot of ultramarine, a lot of Payne's gray, a lot of burnt sienna, raw sienna, and uh, cadmium yellow and yellow ochre is pretty well my palette. And then I just make the colors up as I go. So I used some Davies Gray up there in the transformer part of that. Uh, it's becoming one of my new favorite colors. I've had Davies Gray in my drawer there for the longest time and just recently started using it. And uh, uh, it's got some uses, that's for sure. For the fence, um, I like painting fences. I think I mentioned that before. We're going with a very light Payne's Gray, dropped in some burnt sienna, splash a bit of water on it to give it some texture. Now at this point, I hadn't decided what color my building is, uh, but given that I had drawn tiles in for the roof, uh, I am going with the burnt sienna for the roof, roof tiles. I'll drop in some darker colors there to give it, uh, you know, a bit of wear at the base of it. Uh, but again, this whole time I'm working on the roof, I'm trying to figure out what would be a good color for the building to complement it. I don't, for, I don't work from a reference photo. I just uh, more or less make these things up as I go. So here's a color that I have not used um, for a building front. Yeah, I can't remember the last, if I ever did. Anyway, so I mixed up some hooker's green with some sap green. 
there's what the final image looks like, in case you forgot. Yeah, some hooker's green, some sap green, and it's looking pretty plain there, so I gotta put some wear in it and some, uh, you know, some dirt and grime, which are always good, so I've got only some burnt sienna. While it was still wet, I'm just literally dropping the paint onto the, uh, the wet green. And some, um, what am I going there? Some, some more Payne's Gray and some Ultramine just to darken it up, some more, show some more grit. I also was splashing some water on the building there, some clear water to uh, create even more texture. So while that was drying over there, I went over and did the rocks. Pretty straightforward rocks, a little bit of, uh, what have I got there, raw sienna and a bit of, you know, Payne's Gray underneath for the shadow. Now I've created quite an elaborate chimney here. I guess it looks like there's a ground floor fireplace going on there. And I actually inked out all the bricks in it. Not something I normally do, but this time I decided to ink out all the bricks. And I had really good intentions of making, uh, making the fireplace really jump out. I'm in, using Indian red. It's a color I use probably only for this purpose than doing chimneys and whatnot. Now, at this point, um, the tree, well, what I did with the tree was it's, I wanted to create a contrast with the house because the house looks pretty darn flat. So I jumped in with some cadmium yellow just to really provide some extreme contrast and hopefully have something jump off the page and uh, give this thing a bit of energy. So I went with the cadmium yellow, a bit of cadmium orange, and just uh, flicking some clean water in there to give it some texture. Now I didn't ink the tree when I started this whole thing, uh, but as I'm looking at it now, I thought that I could get away with just having the color in to provide the look I wanted. And uh, that's not exactly working for me, so I will get to that. I mixed up a solid batch of uh, shadow color here with the ultramarine blue and Payne's gray. And unlike other efforts, I actually made enough to cover everything that I want. So the light is coming from the upper left. So I'm just indicating some shadow from that overhang part of the house. And of course all these window sills. And that rock pile, the first, at least the front half of that thing is gonna be in shadow. Yeah, pretty well at this point I've decided I'm going to ink the tree. And I've also decided not to use the um, the Lamy pen because the line would be too heavy and then the tree itself would be a distraction. So I did want to make it... Uh, I wanted the tree to jump out but I also wanted it to be subtle at the same time. If that makes any sense. I'm doing all the stairs. This places, uh, well, not exactly well maintained as you can tell by the missing steps. So I'm using, um, well, I'm using a little brush there too. What have I got? Number two or zero going in to put in the uh, Payne's Gray. You know, that kind of weathered, uh, pressure treated wood look. This for front portion is, um, I want that to be different from the building, so I decided just to be cement. I dropped in um, some blues and a bit of uh, burnt sienna to give it that dirty look. And I used uh, a bit of dry brush technique by the looks of it. And I got my Davies Gray going again for the downspout and eavesdrop. Burnt sienna straight in there for some, uh, some rusty look. 
Now, as I mentioned, the light is coming from the upper left, so I can put that entire chimney, fireplace, uh, put the entire thing in shadow. So it's actually a good idea that I did ink out the whole thing. That'll show through, even through the shadows, and uh, I, anyway, it provides um, some interest to it. Now, here's my little man up in the window. Yellow ochre, red. Oh, by the way, there's a, a template for this, a drawing template, if you want to follow along over at uh, Patreon. So my skin color for the guy was, I know I'm moving on to the sign here, but the skin color is like a yellow ochre with a bit of red and just a hint of blue in there. And I'm just putting in a red nose on him there. He's got his face out in the sun. He's probably there every day looking out over the street. One of those guys. Not putting a whole lot of detail. He's kind of up in the window, so I'm not going to over ink that or, um, you know, make him jump out. I just want to uh, show that he's there. So I'm coming back over to the tree and um, again, given the light was from the upper left, I didn't have any shadow or any um, contrast between the top, you know, um, what do you call that? Let's just call it a shadow on the foliage. The dark underbelly. And the guy, yeah, see, that's working for me. I'm just dropping in a little more Payne's Gray using my spotter brush there just to um, kind of highlight that there is a man in the window. Creepy as that may be. So I'm getting around to some final details here. I'm just inking out the sidewalk, providing a few little odds and ends. And here's where I go in with the road train, this super fine point. And this, I think, is the look I wanted to or whip around the tree here. And what I'm doing is I'm just literally following the outline of the paint. It worked its way into all the nooks and crannies, and then it'll provide a really interesting line for the foliage. So this road train pen, I'm using India ink, which is super black. And uh, I love using it. Anyway, it provides a really dark line. And that is providing the look I wanted. So that's it. That's a, a quick little painting. Hopefully you found something in here that uh, you can use in your paintings. And hopefully you drop by and uh, take a look again to see what we're up to over here. Oh yeah, if you want this painting, get over at the, uh, the Etsy shop. <laughs> Etsy shop. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you again soon.